object can be calculated. If you know information about a body that's orbiting the object, and the body orbiting is very small compared to the uh, central object, so that'll be the case here for the Sun and the Earth. And we're going to calculate the mass of the Sun using information about the uh, Earth's orbit. So we are able to do this because assuming the orbit is a circle, there'll be a centripetal force mass of the Earth and V squared over R. And this centripetal force is provided by gravity from uh, the Sun. So I can replace this centripetal force with the force due to gravity. And we calculate that with the universal constant of gravity, capital G, mass of the Sun, mass of the Earth, and divide by R squared. And that gives us the centripetal force from gravity. Here's our symbol calculation for centripetal force. V squared over R is a centripetal acceleration. So this is kind of an F equals MA situation. Well, you can see we don't need to look up the mass of the Earth. That cancels. We want to know the mass of the Sun. And we can look up various things, of course, so Earth's orbit's well known. But I want to go one step further here, and instead of looking up the uh, speed of the Earth in its orbit, I want to use the time for one orbit. And just a little practice for you, if we're moving in circular motion, the speed is equal to the, the circumference, that's our distance traveled, in the amount of time. So we're going to square this and substitute here. So we'll be putting in 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. And we'll be simplifying the, the r's. So if we do a little simplification right now, before we make that uh, substitution, I get rid of one factor of r on each side. So the g m s over r, I'm going to put in now the square of the speed. So 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. And now let's solve for the uh, mass of the sun. I have to multiply both sides by r. I have to divide both sides by our constant of gravitation. And we find that the mass of the sun is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed over the gravitation constant and t squared. So the information we need about the Earth's orbit is what's the radius of the Earth's orbit? We assume circular for this simple calculation. And what's the amount of time required to uh, uh, for the Earth to go one one orbit? Well, that information is accessible. And the radius of the orbit, this is not the radius of the Earth, but the radius of the Earth's orbit, 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. And I am using meters, not kilometers or miles. I want to use the standard metric unit, and that has to be cubed. And then capital G, I'll go ahead and put it in its number, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 for standard metric units. And then the time, I don't want to use 365.25 days. It's not um, 365. We have leap years because there's an extra quarter day, roughly. But you can look up the, uh, the time in seconds for a year in the cover of most physics books. So 3.156 times 10 to the 7th seconds. And we have to square that. So this is what you need to work out in your calculator. The uh, facts about the orbit we needed to look up, the radius of Earth's orbit around the sun, and how many seconds is required for the Earth to complete one orbit. And when you do that, and multiply by pi squared and the 4 and divide by the constant of gravitation, what you come up with is the mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Uh, a respectable number, a large number, compared to other objects in our solar system. Not especially large compared to other stars, some other stars, but um, there you have it. That's how you calculate the mass of the, or or the Earth, mass of the Sun from the Earth orbit data 
the basic concept is we have the centripetal force expression, mass that's moving, the speed in the orbit squared divided by the radius of the orbit, and gravity was used for the uh, centripetal force. So that's how the mass of the sun gets brought into the calculation. So keep practicing with that. Ask your instructors some questions.